last time you moved your body with joy? When was the last time you truly felt alive? We intentionally create positive ripples or unintentionally create negative ripples. What kind of a ripple do you want to create in the universe? I'm a survivor, a stroke survivor who was once paralyzed from the neck down, a sexual assault survivor, a survivor of the COVID-19 pandemic just like you, but most of all, I'm a survivor of being left out. I'm also the founder of Infinite Flow, an award-winning nonprofit and professional dance company based in Los Angeles. We employ disabled and non-disabled dancers with diverse intersectional identities, and our mission is to use dance as a catalyst to dismantle biases and foster inclusion. Movement brings us alive. Dance belongs to everyone. Today is December 3rd, which is the United Nations International Day for People with Disabilities. So here's a short video of my work. March 2021, I became the first professional dancer to be named People Magazine Women Changing the World. <laughs> Past recipients included Oprah Winfrey, Michelle Obama, Sheryl Sandberg, Kamala Harris, Brene Brown, among other legends. This was a big honor, but instead of a celebration, I had a big meltdown. For days, I curled up in one corner of my apartment and broke down in tears. On one end, I was so grateful for the moment. On the other end, I recognized that I had devoted my life to sharing the joy of dance to many, but, but I had left myself out of experiencing that joy. I had gone out of my way to develop and showcase the underrepresented artists in my dance company, but I put my own artistic development to the side, and I forgot that I was an underrepresented artist who needed a platform as well. I brought communities alive, but I was barely surviving, sacrificing myself financially to keep the organization alive. And I was so lost on the business strategy, and all I can think of was where I fell short as a leader. I really needed help, but I didn't know how to get the help I needed. And then there was grief from losing my papa to cancer. One year into the pandemic, I had never felt so alone or disconnected from my body. Breakdowns serve as a wake-up call for each of us to pause, reflect, and evolve. This was one of those wake-up calls. 
Some of our most impactful projects are born out of our lived experiences of overcoming adversity. Infinite Flow was born out of my lifelong struggle of feeling left out and not fitting the box. Not invited to birthday parties, bullied as one of the few Asian Americans at school, not having friends to eat lunch with, not making it as a ballerina because I just didn't have that ballet body, being told that I don't fit the image of a ballroom or salsa dancer on TV or film. When I learned that one in four Americans, that is 61 million Americans and 1.7 billion people in the world had a disability, and it was clear that disabled people were left out of dance and so many aspects of a life, I felt a deep calling to do something about this. I also realized that there is nothing wrong with my body, ethnicity, or neurodiversity. The problem lied in the inequities and injustices in our societies and systems. And I was committed to be part of the change. One thing led to another, and I created Infinite Flow in 2015. Infinite Flow was my calling. I had finally found my path, and I completely dove in. Diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility are more important than ever, so growing infinite flow was a must-do. I followed my heart and gave everything to the work and mission of the organization. I even froze my eggs, firmly believing that everything should be put to the side to serve this mission and purpose bigger than myself. But this commitment came with a price. I had built an organization that fosters inclusion, but I had left myself out. I left out my well-being. I left out my personal goals. In serving others and serving the world, I forgot to serve myself. Improving myself, I was losing myself. I knew I needed to fill my cup, but just even the thought of serving myself felt so selfish because I live with the motto, when in doubt, focus out. I feared that if I served myself, that would take away from serving others and serving the mission of infinite flow. But I also know that fear is a compass of where we need to grow, and my compass was pointing me towards reconnecting with the joy of movement. And that led me to discovering roller skating and my world changed. <laughs> Roller skating was scary at first, but something about being a total beginner, something about having to be ultra present so I don't fall while still moving to the beat of the music was exactly what my soul needed. Roller skating reconnected me back to moving my body with joy and challenged me kinesthetically, something that I was deeply craving. Within a few weeks, Roller skating became my daily movement meditation. Roller skating brought me alive, and that aliveness rippled into my work and daily life. I was reminded that our body language not only communicates to others, but also speaks to ourselves. Did roller skating solve all the challenges in my organization? Absolutely not. <laughs> It's a work in progress, I still have bumps, I still need help. But after a year of prioritizing an activity that brings me alive, I can confirm that I am happier. I'm more connected to myself and more present when interacting with the people around me. I can think more logically and creatively. Instead of plunging into the next projects, 
I've given myself time to reflect and strategize. Incorporating new lifestyle habits doesn't come naturally. In order to combat the guilt from serving myself, I coined a mindset called the ripple. The concept is simple. We each create ripples of energy. If we carry ourselves with aliveness, the energy of aliveness ripples to the people around us and the work we do and into the world. If we carry ourselves with stress and frustration and anger, that's the energy that ripples out. We intentionally create positive ripples or unintentionally create negative ripples. What kind of a ripple do you want to create in the universe? I choose the ripple with aliveness. What about you? Ripples gradually fade, so we need to create new positive ripples regularly. I have one action item for everyone here. Do something that brought you alive as a child. Think about that. What is that? What brought you alive as a child will bring you alive today. For me, that was movement. If that activity isn't feasible, think of the essence of that activity. Or try something new that you've never done before but wanted to try. Do that thing unapologetically. I'm still learning and still trying to figure this all out, but here's what I want to leave you with. We each have unique gifts, and we are here to use those gifts to serve and make a difference. We do our best work when we ripple with aliveness and positivity. That's why serving others and serving the world starts with serving ourselves first. One of the biggest gifts that came from this journey of learning to take care of myself is this. I started to dream big again. Dream big for myself. Dream big for infinite flow. Dream big for the future of disabled people and other marginalized communities. And dream big for a world dancing, moving, and flowing together. When was the last time you moved your body with joy? When was the last time you truly felt alive? We intentionally create positive ripples or unintentionally create negative ripples. What kind of a ripple do you want to create in the universe? Thank you. Yeah.